Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is for Behavioral Science Statistics, and in it we're looking at the third online quiz for Chapter 9, which is about t-tests. The first question in the quiz is, if a researcher conducts an inferential test, such as a t-test, and retains, that is, fails to reject the null hypothesis, then what is the probability of a type 1 error? The choices are 1.00 or 0.05 or 1.00 minus p or 0, 0.00. The answer to this one is actually zero. It's um, the reason for that is a type one error is a false positive, and that can only happen if you have a positive that can be false. So a positive means that you have a positive result that you've rejected the null hypothesis that you've concluded that something is there, that something is happening. And if you haven't done that, then there's nothing that you're able to reject. And so if you uh, retain the null hypothesis, then there's a zero probability of a false positive. There is, on the other hand, a probability of a false negative. That's the beta, uh, or as complement power that we've talked about before, but that's a, that's a different question. All right, number two. One assumption of the two-sample t-test is that a, the two samples are independent of one another, or B, the data have a uniform distribution, or C, the two samples are as similar as possible, or D, a two-tailed test will be used. The answer is that the two samples are independent of one another. Let me talk about the other ones. B is that the data have a normal, excuse me, have a uniform distribution. That's actually not an assumption of the t-test. Um, we prefer to have normal distributions, uh, more like bell curves, you know, so uniform distribution is a different thing. Uh, the two samples are as similar as possible. Well, that can be helpful in an experimental setting, but it's not an absolute requirement for the test. Or a two-tailed test will be used. Not at all. You can do one-tailed tests. Uh, so let's take a quick look right here. The two samples are independent of one another. That's because you want to have two separate distributions. You want to have distribution for group one and a separate distribution for group two and you're comparing them to each other. Now if your two samples are not independent then you would actually do a uh, related measures or what we call a repeated measures t-test and that's something uh, another procedure that we talk about. Number three, imagine that a researcher conducts a two sample t-test with critical values of plus and minus 2.10 and gets an observed or test value of t equals 1.98. What is the proper conclusion in this case? So, A, retain the null hypothesis, B, reject the null hypothesis, C, it can't be determined without additional information, or D, the researcher should use a z-test instead. The answer in this case is to retain the null hypothesis. I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, reject the null hypothesis, you only do that if your observed value is more extreme than your critical values. Um, cannot be determined without additional information? Nope, we got everything we need, and the idea the researcher should use a z-test. No, that's if you're doing one sample and you're comparing it to a population where you know both the mean and the standard deviation of that population. So let's take a quick look here. Here's our null distribution, and we've set off the extreme high and low ends because we're doing a two-tailed uh, t-test. And let's say that our critical values where the yellow starts are the plus and minus 2.10. 1.98 is close. It's, it's real close, but it doesn't cross over. It's close, but not close enough. And so we retain the null hypothesis because we believe that this value is still within the acceptable or reasonable range of variation for sampling error. Number four, if a researcher wants to compare the effects of an antidepressant to the effects of a placebo on levels of anxiety, then what is the grouping variable? It's the third time we've had a variation on this question. The choices are medication, uh, either antidepressant or placebo, or levels of anxiety, or antidepressant medication, or two sample t-test. Well, the answer here is A, medication, antidepressant versus placebo. Um, very quickly, levels of anxiety is the outcome variable, it's the dependent variable. Antidepressant medication is simply one of the levels within the factor of medication, and a two-sample t-test is the inferential test we would use to analyze the results. Um, let's take a quick look here. Medication is the grouping variable because it is, what, it, it is what defines the two groups that we get the means on. Now, we can also call it the independent variable. Um, so you can think of an experimental setting grouping variable and independent variable as being the same thing. In either case, it's the thing that separates the groups and it's what you're looking at to examine the effect of. Number five, the comparison group in a repeated measures t-test is 
A, the difference between each person's time one and time two scores, or B, the mean for the general population, or C, the grouping variable, or D, each person's own score at time one? Well, the answer in this case is each person's own score at time one. Now, A may seem like a correct answer, uh, looking at the difference between them. That is what we're analyzing, but that's not the comparison group. The idea here is that each person is serving as their own control. Um, B, the mean for the general population is something that we might use, for instance, with a one sample Z or T test where we're comparing a sample to a population mean. Um, and the grouping variable is, you know, the thing that separates the groups. But again, what we're looking at here is how each person's score is different from their time one score. The X at time two minus the X at time one. So the time one for each person serves as their own baseline or their own comparison group. And that's the comparison that's being made. The, with the data that are actually being analyzed are the different scores, but the comparison is with the time one score. Anyhow, that's it for the third quiz, and I'll see you in a moment for the fourth one.